This is the College of Santa Fe CMS 321 screencast for database structures and analysis of algorithms. I'm Carl Horrock and today we're discussing Chapter 1 of Corman et al. Your course textbook. Algorithms are set mechanisms for solving well-defined computational problems. They take an input, process it, and give you an output. We will be looking in this course at ways of describing the efficiency of algorithms, how you can choose what the best algorithm is for your particular application. In this case, we're going to be looking at sorting algorithms in order to determine what the best algorithm is for a particular application. Now, when comparing algorithms, we have to be aware that it's an apples and oranges kind of problem. There are differences in compilers, in computer languages, in hardware, things like RAM, CPU, video memory, bandwidth of your network, all kinds of things might impact a particular computerized solution. So how do we go about comparing algorithms? We do it with a thing called asymptotic notation. And we'll do asymptotic analysis to describe how a particular algorithm works as the number of things we're processing becomes very, very large. Let's look at our first sort, the insertion sort. It's the way you kind of mechanically and instinctively sort, say, a hand of cards being dealt to you in a game of canasta. You simply grab a card, slip it into the deck uh, after making a comparison, maybe left to right in your hand, put it in the right spot. Very straightforward. On page 24 of your textbook, uh, second edition, you'll see the pseudocode for insertion sort, and I suggest you grab hold of a copy of the text due to the resolution of the video here, you'll notice the insertion sort takes an array as input. The array is A, has n things in it. That's the length of array A. I should point out that the pseudocode we use in this textbook is very similar to Python, with the exception of the left pointing arrow for assignment statements and the right-facing triangle for comments. If there's any tip I can give you in tonight's lecture, it's learn Python. Next week we'll be racing these algorithms using Python itself. You'll notice that our author has put a cost column next to each line of code, C1 through C8, and a times column. The cost is the variable that stands for the number of micro or milliseconds that it takes to execute a particular line of code. The times column is the number of times it executes. Line 1 executes n times because it processes the entire array. Line 6, on the other hand, has a big sigma, a summation sign, and the expression that follows basically describes how lucky you are. If you're getting dealt a hand of cards, if you get a deuce, it probably fits immediately in on the left. If you're delta king, it probably fits. Uh, you have to go clear across over to the right side before you find the spot where it fits in. If you get a seven or an eight, chances are you'll have to go in a random hand of cards halfway through the deck before, or halfway through your hand before you find where it fits in. Anyway, taking the cost times the times for each line, adding them up, you get the expression t of n, the time to sort n things, equals this nasty expression at the bottom of the screen. On to the next page, in about the middle, t of n is given as this algebraic expression where the summation signs, by means of clever algebra, have been replaced by normal uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I advise you to work through the algebra so that you understand how the author went from summation notation to the algebraic notation here, the arithmetic notation here. By recombining 
and expansion, you can get this equation describing the runtime of our algorithm. You'll notice the parenthetic expressions are expressions that contain constants, C1 through C8 for cost. They are always times some value of n, n squared, n to the first, or n to the zeroth, in the latter case, which is 1. If we move on, you should already recognize the pattern. This is a quadratic equation. The time to sort n items in an array by an, an insertion sort is an squared plus bn plus c, where a, b, and c are variables that represent the more complex parenthetical cost expressions that we saw in the previous slide. In asymptotic notation, since n squared is enormous compared to n or a or b or c or c1 through c8 in the original case, as n approaches infinity we can disregard all but the highest order term to describe the runtime of our insertion sort. When n is very, very large, the only term that matters is the largest one. Here are the rules for asymptotic notation when you have a function that describes the cost accounting behavior of your algorithm. One, throw away the leading coefficients, a, b, and c in our case. Number two, ignore the lower order terms. Here we have only n and n squared. n is the loser. All you have left in step three is n squared. Put a big theta in front of it, a couple parentheses around it, and you'll have a runtime of theta of n squared to describe the behavior of the insertion sort. YouTube doesn't like larger than 100 megabyte uploads, so we'll pause here and continue with a merge sort on part two of tonight's screencast.